Hello and welcome back to episode two in English in Ulrike by Anki's knitting podcast or podcast about everything yarny and lovely, everything that makes you feel good. My name is Anki uh, and uh, I enjoy knitting a little bit too much, but the last weeks there has been a dip in my knitting. Haven't been feeling quite inspired but I hope that changes soon. You can find me on Instagram as Ulrike by Anki and also on Ravelry. My private account is called Garnabua and you can also of course find me on Facebook as Ulrike by Anki. I'm an indie dyer from Finland. Uh, I live in Turku and uh, I enjoy dyeing and knitting and all yarny stuff a little bit too much. <laughs> Don't we all? I wish I could do it all the time. I love dyeing and everything. Every time I start dyeing in my little dye dungeon, something happens in my head and color starts popping out and I just want to make new colorways all the time. Today, a little bit later, I will present to you a quite new colorway. Uh, it's so new that it still hasn't got a name. We'll see what it will be become. Um, in episode one, in the comments, someone asked me to introduce my shop. I don't have a physical shop. I'm now here in my warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> my little craft room, yarn room, where my, the storage for my web shop is. I do have a web shop uh, called Ulrike Bayanke. I will post the address here below. And I sometimes visit yarn events, uh, do small pop-up shops. I also organize uh, knitting events um, like um, knitting camps at uh, Lobbness, uh, a wonderful old vicarage on Kemi, uh, Chimitu Islands, uh, Kemionsari in the southern of Finland. Um, since we last spoke, since my first episode I just counted, I have been on four <laughs> knitting camps since and it's absolutely lovely to meet all the knitters and talk about things that inspire you and be inspired by others. Uh, it's quite healthy to see how other people com combine the yarns and combine the colors because you always tend to be fixated on certain color families. At least I am and actually you can see my fixations here. Today's outfit is the Saldotna top by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Knitworks. Uh, it is actually one of the few items I have completed since my last episode. I've been having a, some kind of, I don't know, hiccup. <laughs> uh, I can start a project and after a while it doesn't feel like wonderful and inspiring anymore and if I drop it for say a couple of weeks then I probably won't touch it for a long time. Today I have been clearing out a bit. I have been trying to decide what to do. You know all those very very uncomfortable projects that are nearly finished but you're not sure whether you like it or not and not inspired to keep on knitting it. I have not today decided that two will be ripped off. I will disassemble the knits and I will use the yarn for something more lovely. One of them is a test knit. Uh, I should not have engaged in that when I had the flu and had a fever. Uh, that's never good. You don't think clearly. Uh, it is a nice design. There's nothing wrong with the design. It's not just my cup of tea. And I know I will not use that cardigan. 
I could probably do the color work motif in some other kind of project. Um, it is a, a bottom up cardigan knit in the round to be sticked. I won't stick it because then I cannot reuse the yarns. I don't do anything with cut up yarn. And it was kind quite expensive. Um, so I feel relieved. Now, now it feels like I can plan new projects, more inspiring projects. Well, hmm. sometimes, sometimes you just don't feel comfortable with things. And uh, this particular cardigan, if I would have thought this through from the beginning, I would have known that it, it, it is the design, uh, the shape of it is not something I will wear. But I just like the picture. So you can be misled sometimes. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Um, I'll do my best. There was one comment. I really like it when you comment because I'm new at this and sometimes you really don't know how it looks in the eye of the others. I will try to <laughs> hold up my projects a little bit longer um, and I noticed I had problems looking straight into it, to the camera but I'll do my best to correct that. Um, what else? Since we last saw each other, I have visited the biggest craft fair in Finland and I believe the biggest craft fair for, for the public in all of Europe, uh, the craft fair in Tampere in November. It was fun, intensive and, you know, when there's people everywhere and stuff happening all the time, I think I took two or three pictures, so I have nothing to show you because I haven't asked the people in the pictures if I can show them, so that's that. I won't show them without permission. Uh, for the Tampere Craft Fair, I actually got something knit and this was a quick knit. Uh, I sometimes do not really remember how fast time flies when you're preparing for something and doing something. Uh, and the weekend before, I <laughs> realized I ha was going to to display my yarn, Mr. Soft, and I had nothing new. Uh, so I cast on this cowl by Lotta Löf. Lötgren. Oh, ah, I have to check. I'm so bad at names. Lotta H. Lötgren. Uh, in this book, Observation, she has uh, a sweater knit from in this kind of pattern. So, and she had just released this cowl. I'm not big on cowls, but I used it during the craft fair. And I loved it. I thought it would be too hot inside, but it was really, really good. And you know, even the kitchener stitch was fun to do on this one. And I'm, if you're into cows and and stuff you like to have around your neck, this is the perfect yarn. Uh, it is uh, a blend of baby alpaca. 70%, 10% silk, uh, and no, 20% silk and 10% cashmere. So you can probably imagine that this is like a, a Mr. Cloud warm one around your neck. Uh, this yarn has been a total favorite, and I love to knit in it. At first I thought it would be, you know, I kind of like, like, um, 
drapey yarns that I can feel in my fingers and not not so slippery yarns but this has a kind of weight to it so it it's it's lovely to knit um, I prefer bamboo needles with this one because it's it's a little bit slinky uh, it flies off your needles which is a good thing uh, metal needles then that's kind of like hard on your fingers if if uh, if it's not for you but, but I love it hand wash of course but it's good that you don't need to wash wool so often mm. and I'm, I'm absolutely in love there's a few colors left and I will as soon as I will have time I will dye some more I'm actually knitting another project Let's see. I don't want to lose any stitches. I'm knitting the Elegia sweater by Anna Johanna. This is the colorway End of the Rainbow, which I used also in the cowl. And with that, I used this copper heart. Oh. It's very bright now. Uh, it's a little bit more muted in real life. Um, this is fabulous to knit. I love the texture stripes and the lacy stripes. And uh, I have, I think, 10 more rows until I can join it. It's, it's, it's a V-neck design. Absolutely fantastic. But I need to concentrate when I knit on this, so it's not really a TV knit. My way of relaxing is is when I come home from work and, and I don't have to dye or, or, or do anything with my yarn business. Uh, I really like to watch British uh, murder mysteries, uh, police series and stuff like that. Uh, and knit something that I don't have to concentrate so much on because that makes me relax and I, I wind down after work. Uh, speaking of that, I don't dye yarn and sell a yarn uh, as a main income, main business. Um, I'm a small small business owner and I I do office work for a big company and in my free time I can let out my my creative powers and create new colors and wonderful stuff for people I love that that gives me energy speaking of that colors give me energy and well this winter has been harsh it has been very dark, very much snow, and every every single time I thought now maybe the spring is coming, something happened, and we had got a lot of snow. Um, and we went for a vacation in January for a week to the Canary Islands. That was lovely. I really got boosted. A lot of sunshine and and wonderful strolls along along the beach and time with Mojave, which we don't have so much of together uh, on a daily basis. We, he's an entrepreneur as well, so we have a lot of stuff to do. But um, it was really lovely. And we then we came home in the middle of the night to Helsinki uh, to minus 24 Celsius. And I was just ready to fly back and we got got to our car and it had died so welcome home uh, now we finally have it back it's been repaired it was a major thing um, maybe next time i'll take the train or the bus to the to the airport <laughs> things happen um I have pla knitting plans. I finally, finally kind of 
know what I want to do and you helped me a lot. Uh, I still haven't cast on uh, the yarns we were talking about because there was a lot of dyeing and uh, events happening and I had to make samples and stuff like that but I keep I keep them in mind. Um, next I, I will have to cast on something easy for TV knitting, travel knitting, social knitting. So I thought I'd cast on a pair of socks in this, this, uh, which is the witch's hour. Kind of a Halloween color. Mm. I like very deep colors, um, but then there's another another side as well when I can enjoy very light and romantic colors. One of my friends once said, Nanki, you always say you enjoy very powerful colors and rich colors and bright colors and still you do dye a kind of a romantic colorway. <laughs> I remember I felt very surprised but then I took a step back and and looked at my collection at the time and I was able to agree. Uh, I showed you this book by Lotta Holetgren before and this was one of my absolute favorites that was published last year. Uh, I like the stories. I, I kind of connect. Mm. I can find some of my own thoughts in this book. And the designs are very timeless and elegant. This is actually the sweater I was talking about, which is probably has been an inspiration to the Kaolai knit. Uh, but there was some... There it is. I forgot the name. Let's see. The badger sweater. That one I could make. Oh yes. I'm not great at color work, but I'm getting better all the time. So. Uh, and took out a few books just because I like them. Uh, you have probably seen them before but I come back to the, these books. I haven't written anything yet from these books but I'm planning all the time. Uh, I don't know. Are you like me? I, I like to come back and I like to plan and every time I start planning something I choose new colors. Uh, Aime from La Biennime has curated neons and neutrals and this design is my favorite from this book. Uh, I have trouble uh, choosing yarns for this viral sweater. Uh, I would kind of like it to have, have the main color in a dark color and really like neo neons popping out, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. But I think I could Perhaps, <laughs> now this is my design process uh, when it comes to choosing yarn. I could probably, and this is my obsession right now, this kind of colors appeal to me a lot. I should get a table in here next time I film. Wouldn't it be lovely? I don't know which one. 
I should probably have one more. I could do the sil silver lining as a main color. Perhaps. I think this would work. Don't you? And I think this tropical would pop up very well in the color work. Hmm. I have to consider that. I really do. Uh, another favorite is also from a book curated by Amy. Amy Gill, Gille, Gill, however is the pronounced name. And this is a really a camp knit because on a knitting camp, I think it was last February, someone, I think it was Jonna, perhaps, was knitting this stratified sweater and it inspired everyone. You can probably see it at its best here with all these stripes. Now, I'm not really a striped person, but this kind of stripe, when you like break it with with texture, I might be able to wear. I don't know why I have this difficulty with stripes. <laughs> How about you? Are you stripy persons or do you like color work or what are your preferences? I feel the Mayra Mekko, the Mayra dress is, is really growing on me. But I think it's too thick. I'm, I'm a kind of a warm person. But sometimes when during winter, when, when you come home and the house is kind of quite cold when you haven't been home to heat it. And then I, I would really need need a Mayra dress. Uh, then I thought I would show you another plan, if I can find it. Um, I didn't mark it before I started filming. How stupid of me. Here it is. Let's see, it is called... Uh, Minne. It is a design by Lena Hoimela and you can find it in the Urban Knit Easy book. It's a timeless design. Um, I really like it. Uh, those are my plans. And then there are a million others. Those are my plans, and um, I have a bit of difficulty choosing. At this moment, I have like a desire for sweaters and cardigans only. Uh, I need new scarves. The ones I have, I have used a lot. Uh, one of my favorites is is this Slip Stravaganza by Steve West. I really, really like it, even though. The colors are not my go-to colors. Maybe that's why I like it so much, but uh, the shape is, is a little bit problematic when you wear it. Because there's a lot, if you, if you put it on, like I normally put on shawls, then you have a lot of fabric around your neck. And if you're driving, well, I don't like when I have to turn my head to check if somebody else is coming. I don't like to have too much hair. Uh, I should make a two-color, two-skein shawl. Uh, I have worn my So Peachy by... I can't remember the designer's name, Lehmann. Put it here and in the description box 
that one I have worn a lot and it's in a, a dark gray and a rosy pink color uh, I might well I don't know I don't feel like inspired to knit the same shawl all over again in different colors I'll have to dig out another pattern yes that's the plan so now I have like three two cardinals and one sweater planned have I oh my mm. let's try to do that did I show no I didn't show you the stratified yarns yet um I decided I would well I have been like playing with colors like these in in this uh, Sodotna that was my first choice and uh, then I wanted more cooler colors because I think now since my hair is turning gray I think cooler colors look better on me I don't know and uh, this kind of colors has been very very appealing to me lately how do people hold yarn so you can see five different colors at the same time without them falling now now I only have to decide which one will be the main color which do I need two skeins of uh, we have lady violet here the color is inspired by a character in the <laughs> crown series then we have Forest Path, one of the original colors I started out with. Then we have Before the Light, a new one for last year, Magnolia and Aubergine. So these could be, no, they... let's say these are. Hey, this is my stratified. I'm feeling more sure now than with any of the combinations I put together last year. Because in June I said, now I will make it. Make it. I need that sweater. And I haven't even started yet. <laughs> Does that ever happen to you? Uh what else mm. i should be making tops for the summer i would like to have more layering pieces uh, but i don't like to knit in in linen or bamboo even though they are perfect materials for summer uh, so that's a little bit tricky i love the silky merino i have I will show it to you next time when, when spring is further on. I have a tea knit in this Astra Silky Merino uh, one ply single. <sighs> Maybe I should do something tonight. I don't know. I don't want stripes. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. For me, wool is not really an option during summer. If we're not talking about chilly summer evenings when you want to sit, still sit in your garden. Mm, I don't know. I feel it's too warm for me. Uh, anyway. I wonder if I did remember everything. Today I haven't got anything on my needles that I could knit on uh, since I have to concentrate while knitting on Elegia. But uh, actually, let's talk about this beauty. 
this is the new colorway. This is dyed on merino sock, which is my really my go-to yarn base. Little speckles. Doesn't really focus, does it? Summer colors. A little pastel neon thing going on. I have trouble naming this color. Last year, when the winter came back, when I had thought that now it is time for spring. And we got dumped with about 10 centimeters of snow and it's happened again in a more dramatic way than last year. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, last year I dyed the tropical colorway. I dumped it somewhere. Anyway, here it is. This one. And this year I dyed this one. And I really don't know what to call it. And I thought, since I sometimes need help with naming my colorways, some of them are really like when when uh, uh, it's ready, when the dye hits the pot and you get the, the first kind of glimpse of what it will become, because every time it is an experiment, sometimes the name just pops out. I really don't know sometimes what from where it comes. Uh, every name I think of uh, feels like it's wrong. So I would really appreciate it if you would give me your suggestions in the comments below. Mm, and I thought that the name I like the most, which in my opinion is the one that matches this yarn uh, perfectly. Uh, that person that make the suggestion could get a skein of his or her own. So enter your uh, suggestion below and you're in, you're participating in winning one of these skeins. We should probably make a deadline for the name suggestions. Um, maybe today is 18th of February, shall we say, well, I'm going on my next event, 9th of March, well, let's say 29th of February. By then, enter a comment and I will decide on the name with the help of you and the winner of the name competition wins a skein of their own in this very, very wonderful spring yarn. Well, that's it, I think. Please comment if there's something you want me to discuss in my next episode. Um, please comment, make suggestions ask me anything we could do a q a at some point it's a lot easier to tell you about yourself if you have questions because in my opinion i'm not that interesting but maybe somebody wants to know something that i haven't told you yet well have a nice uh, knitting week uh, enjoy your knitting and we'll see you soon